Being in favor of precious metals. Whether you're interested in offsetting inflation, short-term profits, or diversifying your portfolio, now may be the ideal time to invest in precious metals. Call 800-854-3361 now for free information from Monix International on today's exciting investment opportunities in precious metals. You'll discover the advantage Monix gives precious metals investors. Remember, investing in commodities does involve risk. In some investments, you can lose more than your initial investment. So get the facts. Call for your free guide. There's no obligation, so call now. Bob Pasella, Headline Sports. The Miami Dolphins are in the driver's seat to secure their first playoff berth since 1985. Last night at Joe Robbie, the Dolphins took apart New England 31-10 to move into a first-place tie in the AFC East with the Bills. Sammy Smith scored three times. Now, should Miami win its final two games, it's at least assured of a wild-card spot and perhaps the division title. Minnesota is within one win of its first division title in nine years. The Vikings shot down the Falcons 43-17. The defense directly accounted for a pair of scores. Keith Millard and Tim Newton ran in fumble recoveries. The Packers' playoff hopes all but vanished with yesterday's 21-3 loss to Kansas City. Steve DeBerg was 15 of 19 for 203 yards and two scores. The Giants remain tied with the Eagles atop the NFC East. At blizzard-like mile high, New York drifted past the Broncos 14-7. Phil Sims hit David Meggett on a 57-yarder. Both teams are 10-4. The Eagles won Bounty Bowl 2. The Lions handed the Bears their fourth straight loss. New Orleans dropped the Bills. The Steelers shut out the Jets. Joe Gibbs won his 100th for the skin. Seattle stops Cincinnati. The Oilers over Tampa. Meantime, the Colts beat the Browns in overtime. Cleveland falls a game and a half behind Houston. And the Raiders rally past Phoenix. In the NBA, the Lakers lost to expansion. Orlando 108-103. to Terry Catlich scored 26. L.A. has dropped two straight. And Milwaukee blazed past Portland. College top 25. Oregon State beat the Vols. On the ice, the Kings doubled Quebec. Winnipeg skated past Calgary. Buffalo a goal better than Washington. The Flyers tripped up the Rangers, and Chicago trounced Vancouver. Bob Pasella, Headline Sports. Introducing Hands Free, the no hands hair dryer from Windmere. Hands-free lets you use both hands to help style and shape while you're drying your hair. And you can use it hands-on for perfect diffuse drying action. Great for pets, too. Hands-free, the no hands hair dryer by Windmere. Available at service merchandise. Not today. I can't have a headache today. Miss, miss. Please, not today. Oh, no. Excuse me. First day on the job. Anison. When relief is a must, reach for Anison. Not only does Anison have more medicine than regular aspirin or regular strength Tylenol, it also provides more pain relief. Great lunch. Now get ready for dinner. Anison. When relief is a must. Bill Cosby says his estranged daughter Erin is irresponsible and untrustworthy. In a published interview, America's favorite TV father says 23-year-old Erin uses her boyfriends, has never held down a job nor kept an apartment for more than six months. Erin has been treated for drug and alcohol abuse. The author of the book Fatherhood says ignoring calls for help from your children is tough, but he says, quote, you can't let the kid use you. Now the news about other entertainment notables in our Hollywood Minute. This is Dennis Michael with the Hollywood Minute. The yellow brick road is crossing the wall. The Wizard of Oz will be shown for the first time in an East German movie theater next week. The movie was released first in 1939, the year war broke out in Europe. Turner Entertainment, the movie's contemporary owner, has loaned the film to the U.S. Information Agency for the showing. Robert De Niro suffered a broken nose while shooting his latest movie, Awakenings, in Brooklyn. The culprit is Robin Williams. Columnist Robert Osborne says the comedian's elbow slipped while shooting a scene with the actor, says Osborne, nobody feels worse about it than Robin Williams. This is Dennis Michael with The Hollywood Minute. 
Some acclaimed theatrical plays will soon be lighting up your television screen. The theater productions are being staged for Cable's Arts and Entertainment Channel. Cynthia Tornquist explains. Tony Award winners Elizabeth Ashley, Len Cariou, and Jose Ferrer star in a production of Eugene O'Neill's The Rope. I tell you, between the two of you, you'd have drove me right out of my grave. Like the play you know, is the second in a series of one-act plays to be produced by Nederlander Television to be aired by the Arts and Entertainment Network. A&E is not the first to adapt stage plays for television. Public stations have done it with the help of corporate sponsors, but most of the productions offered by public TV have been British imports. Well, let's not name names, but I don't know, Exxon Mobil, whoever those people, I don't know. But I mean, they go there, they buy stuff from the BBC, which doesn't cost them very much. They come over here, they get a tax break, a pat on the back for culture, and everybody says, well, I guess Americans can't do that. Well, I get ticked, <laughs> because of course we can. In the coming months, A&E will air two more one-act plays, Tennessee Williams' 27 Wagons Full of Cotton and Let Me Hear You Whisper by Paul Zindel. Let me hear you whisper. Let Me Hear You Whisper stars Gene Stapleton and Rue McClenahan. Stapleton says the shows may inspire viewers to attend the theater. So possibly the viewer will see the difference in the quality of the writing it's subliminal sometimes, and they'll learn that it's a theater piece. Oh, let's go to the theater. I hope so. <laughs> Behind these presentations is Gladys Niederlander, executive producer of Niederlander Television, an arm of the Niederlander organization which produces shows for the Broadway stage. She says her organization is considering bringing full-length plays to television. Jimmy Niederlander made all the arrangements, and I'm going to produce with Jimmy and Liz McCann the Orpheus Descending, Tennessee Williams, with Vanessa Redgrave. And we'll do that at the end of the run. Should these productions prove successful, television viewers may soon see more plays adapted for television, both for cable and broadcast TV. Cynthia Tornquist, CNN Entertainment News, New York. And that's our report for this half hour. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jill Chernikoff. Around the world in 30 minutes, this is Headline News. Viewer's Guide to Headline News. The fastest, most accurate news anywhere. At 30 minutes into every hour, top stories. At a quarter till, dollars and cents. At 10 until the hour, sports. Oh my goodness. And at five before the hour, people, places, and things. Headline News. Every half hour, 24 hours a day. Headline News. Anytime, all the time. Turner Broadcasting System. This is Headline News. In 1939, they set the world on fire. And on Wednesday, the Superstation is proud to present Clark Gable and Vivian Lee in one of the greatest motion pictures of all time, Gone with the Wind. And on Friday, TBS continues its salute to this legendary film with a look behind the scenes during Gone with the Wind, the making of the legend. See You know what can really add to the momentum in the Magic's first year? The fans. If the team and the fans hang in there and give it everything they've got, throw in some teamwork and patience, pretty soon the Magic might make the heat disappear. Whatever the game, there's one source for this kind of insight into sports every day. The stories behind the scores and the athletes. The Orlando Sentinel Sports Section. It's an easy call.
News. I'm Jill Chernikoff. The captain of the USS Iowa is joining the ranks of the skeptics. Captain Fred Mosley testified before Congress today and expressed doubts about a Navy report on the April explosion aboard his ship. Members of Congress are doing the same. The Navy claims gunners made Clayton Hartwig most likely cause the explosion. Hartwig was among 47 Iowa crew members who died in the blast. Mosley says he's not certain Hartwig is to blame, and the captain defends his crew. The Iowa you read about in the press does not exist. The real Iowa and her crew are here today, well-trained, well-disciplined, well-led, and ready for your personal inspection. They have proven themselves worthy of praise, worthy of support, and worthy of the pride we ourselves share in our nation's cause. The Senate Armed Services Committee will resume its hearings into the Iowa explosion later on today. Philippines President Corazon Aquino today delayed the start of negotiations over U.S. military bases in her country. As Taylor Henry reports, the American role against the recent coup attempt has heightened controversy over the U.S. presence. It was a decision that could backfire on the Bush administration and Philippine President Corazon Aquino. The decision to provide U.S. air cover for Philippine government troops putting down the latest military rebellion against Aquino. Just as American negotiators are attempting to reach an agreement for extending a lease on six U.S. military bases in the Philippines, center of U.S. air and naval operations in the Central Pacific, the Indian Ocean, and beyond. How can she say no to a foreign power that kept her in office. Vice President Salvador Laurel and other leaders of the opposition Nationalista Party passed a resolution after the U.S. intervention reversing their position on the bases and calling for their removal when the lease expires in September 1991. That leaves the bases, including Clark Air and Subic Bay Naval, without any committed support among the approximately one dozen opposition parties in the Philippines, where the Senate has passed two resolutions in favor of getting rid of them. A number of U.S. servicemen have been killed in recent months by terrorists opposed to the bases, which have been blamed in protest rallies for everything from AIDS to imperialism. Around 100,000 Filipinos attended a mass in Manila in support of Aquino, who defends her decision to call in U.S. forces for the first time in a half dozen coup attempts. Uh, this is something well within uh, the power of two sovereign nations. The bases provide jobs for around 68,000 people in the Philippine labor force in a country where annual per capita income is less than $700 and inflation is running at more than 13 percent. The U.S. is currently pumping nearly a half billion dollars a year in aid into the Philippine economy to keep the bases. Philippine naval vessels anchored in Manila Bay provided a makeshift prison for some soldiers who staged the coup attempt, which they claim would have been successful had it not been for the U.S. intervention. The base's agreement between the two countries requires a one year's notice of any intention on either side to shut them down. That gives American diplomats no more than nine months and a few days to keep the Philippine government from reinforcing its bargaining position by joining the rising tide of political opposition to the U.S. military presence here. Taylor Henry, CNN, Manila. National Security Advisor Brent Scowcroft and other U.S. officials are briefing Japanese leaders today on their visit to China. Sources say Washington and Tokyo have agreed to coordinate their policies toward the Beijing government. Scowcroft's surprise visit to China has distressed critics who are still angry about the Tiananmen Square massacre. But China's official news media today hailed the visit, and Chinese leaders say it's time to restore good relations with the U.S. Secretary of State James Baker is in Europe, talking about the changing political situation there. Before leaving the United States, Baker urged caution on efforts to reunite East and West Germany. He says rushing reunification could lead to violence and instability. Baker is to meet tomorrow with West German Chancellor Helmut Kohl, the most prominent advocate of reunification. Amid new speculation about German reunification, today the four allies that defeated Nazi Germany held their first meeting in Berlin since 1971. As a result of post-war treaties, the U.S., the USSR, France and Britain still retain a substantial say in the future of Berlin. After today's meeting, the Soviets expressed interest in reducing East Berlin's international isolation. But the Kremlin is still voicing opposition to the bigger question of reuniting the two Germanys. The people of Czechoslovakia are raising their voices in celebration today. Bells are ringing in Prague and other cities to mark the end of the communist 41-year domination of the Czechoslovakian government. 
In response to calls from opposition groups for greater freedom, a new cabinet was sworn in yesterday, giving non-communists a majority of power. Also today, army units began pulling down the Iron Curtain that closed off the border with Austria. Vice President Dan Quayle plans to lobby the United Nations later today. During a speech in, a new, in New York last night, Quayle said a UN resolution declaring Zionism as a form of racism should be repealed. Zionism, the idea that Jews are entitled to a homeland, was the movement which led to the formation of Israel. The Vice President says he'll make his appeal directly to the UN Secretary General. This resolution would state that Zionism is not and never has been a form of racism. Furthermore, we would declare